this is the learning objectives. We're pretty much learning how to use a package stacks to do model stacking in this chapter. Um, so ensembling is a key term here. It's basically uh, putting together a bunch of predictions from many different models into one prediction, one final prediction. And hopefully that you know gives you more predictive powers. Uh, but we've already seen this type of stuff already in one type of model. So random forest is an example where you kind of take a bunch of forests and aggregate them into one to come up with one consensus. Uh, or there's a bootstrap aggregating, same idea. You can take a bunch of samples and then you know combine them into one uh, and same as boosting. But what we've done so far is within one single type of model. But in this chapter, we're going to learn how to uh, stack different types of models, whether it's linear model, random forest, uh, spectrum machine, that's the example used in the book. Um, and we're going to uh, combine them together to create one uh, new model that gives you, uh, gives you a new prediction. Yeah, so stacks package, um, they have a really nice uh, intro uh, vignette, I guess, um, in this in this URL here. So feel free to check it out if you haven't. Um, but the process is pretty simple. You define some models, uh, like I said, linear model, random forest, whatever it is. And those are, we're going to call them candidate numbers because they, uh, every single model kind of contribute to your final uh, prediction. Um, and then you, you start using the stacks package. Um, so, so far, number one, it was, you know, everything we've learned in the book so far, you generate a workflow. Uh, resample it, you tune it, and then that's a candidate model. But you start using the stacks package in step two, where you initialize it with the stacks call, uh, and then you add all the models you've created with add members. Um, so yeah, that creates a model data stack, and then you're going to blend the predictions of the members using this stacks blend predictions uh, function. And what you get out of it is basically a linear combination of each member's prediction. So it's kind of like, oh, this model is more important. This model is not that important. And then this model gets more weight and this model doesn't get too much weight. And then you combine them. That's the idea essentially. Uh, and then now that we know how to blend the members together, we fit each members uh, one, one last time with our whole training set. And then you predict on the new uh, testing set. Um, one key thing, though, is you you're supposed to use the same R R split pack R split object. So since we're doing a resample, since we're doing a uh, tune grid, we're working with the assessment sets before we actually tune the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's important to use the same uh, R split package. Sorry, R split object. And then for the rest of the slides here, I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, detail some of the steps that that's, uh, that's listed here. But um, yeah, so I got these images from the Stacks uh, package page. It's really good. Like, you should check it out if you haven't. Let me zoom in here. So define some models. So every model is a workflow object that's been either tuned or resampled. And if your model has um, a bunch of parameters, hyperparameters, you actually get multiple models out of the type of model. So uh, K and N has, uh, what is it? The number of neighbors, that's the hyperparameter. So in this case, we use four different neighbors and uh, support vector machines. I don't know what hyperparameter is off the top of my head, but we're creating six different models. Um, and then linear regression, since there's no hyperparameter that we're dealing with, uh, just one single model. And the book recommends the racing method so that you can kind of get the speed advantage if you don't need to go further with a model, you just drop it. Um, and then another key uh, detail is that you need to save the assessment set predictions in the workflow using the save pred is true and save workflow is true argument in the control option. But the stacks package actually offers you a nice little uh, um, helper function which we'll see later. I've already covered this. And so that's the models that we define. And these are going to be our candidate models. Um, any comments or questions before I move on to the next? OK. All right, so this is where 
this is where it comes in. Um, so the data stacks, in essence, are a tibble. Um, we have the actual outcome in the first column. And then throughout the rest of the columns, we have what each of the models think the predict uh, the response is going to be. So what they uh, produce as the outcome, as you know, this is going to be the outcome from KNN one model, and this is going to be the outcome from uh, linear model uh, number one, and so on. So it's it's a it's a table. Um, so you call the stacks to initialize it. Uh, okay, don't pay too much attention to this. I just copied and pasted it from the uh, vignette here. <laughs> um, but yeah, you initialize with a stack, add candidates, the three models that we defined up here. Um, KNN res is actually a tuned result of the KNN. So you know how you do the initial split, blah, blah, blah. Uh, KNN res is equal to tuned grid, workflow, tuned grid. Uh, you, you know the deal. Um, we'll cover that in the live coding session. And then once you print it, it gives you a nice summary of what uh, you actually have. So it's a data stack with three model definitions and 11 candidate members. Three model definitions because we're using three different models, KNN, linear model, and its vector machine, support vector machine, but 11 because we have hyperparameters. And then we're predicting on this column called latency in the example. And then once you actually call the as tibble, you convert this into a tibble, it's actually a tibble. It's latency. And this is what KNN, the first model, thought was the uh, outcome, which is horrible. <laughs> um, and, but linear regression actually gives you 114. Um, so you know you can kind of see how different models predict different types of things. Um, and then uh, and then you kind of you kind you'll kind of combine it the at the next step there. But this is what um, Stacks gives you once you once you call once you call it. Uh, sorry to interrupt. So I wonder, would it make sense if you have like a larger grid or something that you tuned to like pre-select some of the best models before stacking them, or you should just uh, put all of the models that you trained? I think you throw them all in together and it's going to weed out the it's going to filter out the useless models anyway in the blend predictions here, which I'll explain shortly. But yeah, I think you just throw them in together if you, if you, you know, don't have a, uh, if you don't have a good idea like what models are going to perform well. But if you do, feel free to drop them. I guess. Um, that's I don't know. That's my take. Thanks. Did that answer your question? Okay. All right. So now. We have the data stack. We're going to blend them, fit them, and predict on the testing set. So blend predictions performs a lasso regularization. So you know, uh, useless models get dropped out. Um, and then we only keep the yeah, non-zero coefficients because we don't want to use every single model because some of them might be useless. And it's a pretty simple call. You, you call the blend predictions on the data stack uh, object. And the auto plot function they offer you is pretty handy. You can kind of see the uh, RMSC go down. Uh, not that much, but as you in, uh, introduce more penalty. Um, but if you don't like what you're seeing here, you can try your own penalty argument, which which I think is the book does. They do like a, a sequence of penalties and they plot it together. But uh, yeah, you can you can introduce your own penalty. And then essentially, this is what it gives you. Um, the ensemble prediction is a linear combination of what each of our member model candidate members uh, predict. So you can see the boost tree uh, has a pretty heavy uh, weight here, whereas you, see, you go to the Mars prediction, um, it's pretty much zero because I don't know, maybe it's useless. But yeah, this, this is what it gives you at the end of the day when you blend predictions. It's, it's a linear combination of, the, of our predictions. And now that we know how to blend our models, we're gonna fit one last time on the whole training set on each model. So we maybe maybe we have this model, this model, this model, this, 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 uh, that we think is pretty important. And we're gonna train each one of them. And whatever we get from the from training the whole training set, uh, we're gonna use this kind of uh, weights to predict, uh, sorry, blend. And then once you have that, it's it's the same thing as uh, you know, any other any other model you kind of predict. And then bind calls, you can 
I don't know, see what uh, see what it gives you versus what your testing set uh, like answers are. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we're gonna do uh, some I live coding. But... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you mentioned the linear combination and the, the book I think mentions like a linear regression. So are the coefficients always add up to one or is that uh, not the case? So. Sure. So I think like I in, in a mathematically precise way, linear combination means that that like the, the coefficients have to add up to one. And it makes sense intuitively because if they are good predictions on their own, then, then you shouldn't like to take it two times or something like that. So I was just wondering. Oh, you went over one. That. Almost. It seems yeah. close yeah. enough. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> it could be like a rounding error. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Um, that would make sense, right? Yeah. I think. yeah. Uh, good question, though. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, any other question? Um, so when you said uh, retrain on the training data, so is it retraining the individual models from scratch and getting the individual model coefficients and then you putting on top of it the weights for the ensemble? Is that what's That's going on? Is there a reason why they need to do that? Because in theory, or they, all the models are already trained? Or is that just because like you're... a final step kind of thing? Yeah. Because you're using the resamples here it, when you're uh, training each of the candidate members. So oh, the every single one of these are either fit resampled or tuned gridded. So, you know, we're only working with the assessment sets, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's why so you train the whole So members, instead of doing uh, each it one of on a cross validation fa validated set, it's now just you already know the hyper parameters, just do it off of everything get the final set of weights and then that's it and then you yeah. use so so you're not tuning the weights those, anymore uh, you're not tuning the model like the ensemble weights anymore you're tuning the you're you're re, you're recreating the betas or whatever for the individual model not the correct yeah ensemble level got it um yeah so that stacks um let's let's code okay uh, I'm gonna get out of here. i'm just gonna use empty cards because my computer is garbage um but you guys you guys get the idea Is Dax part of the tidy models? It should be. Okay, I think it is. Okay, perfect. Well, if you if you um, are right. namespace it like that, it's that just means you have it installed, oh, oh, not necessarily. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I, oh, I'm pretty isn't. sure it is. Okay. Oh, it isn't. All right, cool. Well, there we go. <laughs> I think so. Oh, good to know. Hey, um, Hello. 
Hello? He's stuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, oh, okay. I think his internet connection sort of died. Did it? But do you see? Do you see him moving? Because I don't see him. No, so the stuck. the screen share and his webcam are both frozen. gone <laughs> well there it is okay. well <laughs> so many things <laughs> okay so i um, i had a question so i didn't have time to, um, to ask me yeah, i'll ask it later can you hear the noise um there's like a little bit of background noise but it's not like terrible okay so my question, I don't know if you, if you, if you um, the, the example that he did uh, was just uh, putting inside uh, a model. Okay, so uh, not, not as in the book, where in the book there, there is the grid, uh, the racing um, things inside, no? In the book does the example uh that we have done in chapter 15 where is the grid and the racing things where hello hello uh i am not sure where that would be i i guess i guess you can ask juan the yeah i'll ask yeah, the question what was our question hello we lost we, yeah we sorry lost, my internet's uh, uh not looking up i guess Was there a question for me? Or? I was I was saying you you did um, you make an example um, with uh, inside the stack when you add the In... candidates you, you just add can you hear me? Hello. Yeah yeah. You you add the models you add the three three types of, of models uh, while in the book. Inside uh, there was uh, the raising thing. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. So that was like um, workflow, and then uh, so th there was a raising within models and a list of the with the best outcomes. Yeah. So what is the difference with uh, with putting inside just a model? I think it's quite the same question, but slightly different than uh, putting inside uh, a racing thing, as suggested in, uh, in the book. Racing thing is just for tuning, right? I think it just so that your tuning doesn't take too much time. I, I think it's just an extra step that you throw in before you toss them into the ad candidate. That's my understanding. Because yeah, I think I, so. So, I so, so yeah. Yeah. No, no, say it. So I think any kind of trained workflow is good. And whether you train your workflow using any methods, it doesn't matter. What matters is that in the end, what kind of models you have in, in your workflows or web workflow sets, it's my understanding. Because um, when uh, he just put inside, as, as an example in the stack vignette, the model, just like this. And then he did like three um, adding things with three different models. While in the book, there is one uh, adding thing and uh, the raising uh, data set with the, the list of the models, but the models have been like trained. And, oh, I know uh, what you mean. Yeah, so it, it's- I think like in the book, they skipped a line of code. Because there's supposed to be a line that does uh, racing ANOVA. I think they skipped a line and, you know, whatever the result is, they just threw it into the, into the uh, stacks. I think uh, you're talking about this line, right?
like this one. And then they just throw it into uh, add candidates. Uh, okay, this this race result is the result yep. of the racing thing that, uh, mm -hmm. that is in the chapter 15. If you go on chapter yep. 15, you see, that, I don't know if you remember, but we did it like all the things about screening many models and everything, and there were two two methods, one with grid and one with racing thing. And um, this, uh, th th there it is. There it is, race results. Yeah. That is a yeah. workflow map with inside all the five models, all the models that we have blended in, uh, and put inside. Then there is the example and the grid. So like he, um, it's not just a single model put inside, but it's a list of models that have been resampled, uh, tuned, and uh, put inside a workflow map. So that it's yep. a big workflow. Yeah. Uh, this is good to know that you can just use a single model and put it inside because I didn't check that. But yeah. Did you understand in any? Can you can you think about what would be the difference? What would be the difference? Okay. Well, it's just uh, that, that line of code, right? In uh, add candidates, it's just whether you throw in race results or you throw in three different lines of add 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 candidates. You know, uh, I think that's a difference because this kind of does it for you. It because it holds it in one place. The three mm -hmm. uh, members that you were gonna throw on. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's a difference. Okay. 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 No, I don't want to. Uh, I have no other question. Thanks. Okay. All right. So let's tune. And then linear model, we're going to hit resample it. Resample. Yeah, so this saves uh, you know all the stuff for you. Work. I think that's working. No. Oh. Wow. Oh, okay. Two. Am I not supposed to do this? Oh, controls. Oh. 
whatever. I think I think that worked. And now we're gonna do stats. Add candidates. This one. This one. Let's go. Okay, okay. So we're predicting uh, this peer, and then linear model predicted 98 on the first row, and then our two uh, random forest uh, predicted this much. Um, so you, you can kind of see the picture, right? Like uh, a linear model probably get more weights when we blend the predictions, whereas uh random forest that did a poor job so they're probably going to get less weights so let's see how this turns out Do you know how blended predictions is working? Is it really as something as simple like model predicts this, the actual value is this, and we calculate some value based off of how much error there is? Is that really all it's doing? I guess the other question is, is it like a closed form solution or is there like some iterate, uh, iteration? Oh no, it's based off of a lasso model. Okay. Yeah. I see. So there is some iteration involved. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so like we predicted. Wait, hold on. Why, why does random forest get more weights? <laughs> um, apparently it does. Uh, maybe we can try different penalties. I don't know. Penalty. Why is it only listing two out of the three? Because it's a type of model. Uh, hold on. Is that the case? Oh, it dropped it, it dropped one of them because it's a zero coefficient. Yeah, why did the linear model get completely dropped? <laughs> it didn't. Oh, no, it didn't. One, one okay, of the, the, other, did. the other random forest got because dropped. Because it's highly okay. correlated with the other one, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK, here's our auto plot. Um, that looks like it got worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think we can do also uh, auto plot by weight. Um, height, I think. Weights. That that is super weird. That random forest got like a huge. Yeah. Weight, but. Maybe the data set is so small that it's like almost random. Maybe, but but like the other thing is that weight is starting off above one. So it's like, why is it above one if our initial assumption was it'll add up to one? <laughs> Maybe it won't. I don't know. But I don't know. This kind of makes sense here, though. Like uh, first, first row was an anomaly, I think. If you go down more, like the higher values. I don't know, maybe the random forest does a better job. I, I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We just looked at a terrible example. <laughs> um, I think it also has an intercept, and that's why it does not have to add up to one, because. OK, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. So I guess it doesn't have to add up to one. But it, it still would um, make sense that that with the larger data set. Does it say anything? Details. I don't know. Yeah, we'll post into the Slack or something. We'll pick it up. Um, Unless the weight, I mean, the weight is literally weight times 
the value out of the model. So it would make sense oh, that could be because it, yeah. yeah, cause otherwise you're just shrinking everything all the time. Yeah. It could be like a simple like linear regression rather than like a linear combination of the predictions. Uh, yeah. Cause like you could have a model, I mean, it's sort of like how boosting works. It's like, yeah, this thing works really well here. So we'll give it like a value of like five yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, so that's probably why it, it probably doesn't sum up to one and it would make sense if it doesn't, because then you're literally making every model worse because <laughs> it's always going to be less than one. Yeah. All right, so that's the, we're now trained on the uh, entire training set rather than the fold. Which, oh, it doesn't take that. So it doesn't, oh, collect parameters, okay. I can, I can collect predictions, right? Okay, never mind. What? The numbers. Oh, okay. Got to Right. Okay, so let's uh, now that we have a ensemble model, let's uh, do it on the test set. Main bind calls predict. I think this one. Yay. Jump point. What is it? Dot pred and mp3. Yeah. That's a AES. AES. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty good. These were pretty good, but that was way off. Um, but yeah, that's the whole workflow, I think. I think I covered everything. Um, the other question about this, um, yeah. and this came up because I had a discussion like a couple of weeks, like last week. When you get, for example, just the, Uh, if you scroll up in your console a little bit, um, yeah, when you called like collect predictors or predictions, is there is there a way to get that stuff or like look at my stacks blended final fit? Like, can we pull values yeah. out of it um, directly? Because I'm assuming it's a list object. Um, but there was like that example early on and earlier on in the book where Max was like, yeah, you can have like dollar sign model or dollar sign predict, but don't don't use it. You have to call like the tidy models function around it. And does that apply to this case as well? Because one of the questions I got or we were discussing last week was like tidy models is really great. If all you care about is like, I just need a good prediction score, but if you're like care at all about inference or you want to inspect any part of this, like it's, it's not that easy to get out individual parts. Mm. And I don't know if, um, and the only example I remember was like earlier on where we're like, there's literally a predict function in the model object, but you don't use it you called like the generic tidy models predict using that model or something. Um, and I wonder how many of those examples exist uh, where you have to use the tidy models way versus like if you were just exploring something on your own and just pu pulling out pieces 
on your own to do your own like you know inspecting of the model or you have to do everything through tidy models yeah I don't have a good answer but uh yeah the whole inference thing i've always been redirected to like a after you've trained the model go to this model agnostic tool like you know lying or something like that, that's what i've been always redirected to that works on i guess like since models. if we're here right since we have like all of these bits here how would are you able like the my stacks blended final fit can we get just the linear model out of it like just the lm model and then if we wanted to just fit like this off of some other data set can we just okay. use the lm model without without that whole blended bit can i do the pull workflow like where is it pull workflow fit this type of stuff is what i would do in like a workflow set setting but I don't, I don't know about these stacks. I see. Um, yeah, because I think like I this is work. sort of the yeah. problem that people end up having was like, you have to know so much of tidy models versus like just pulling things out manually by yourself. And it's like this bland balance between like, yeah, and a function exists, but <laughs> you have to use the functions. I guess that's sort of like the issue that I'm seeing. This is coming from like the perspective of like, let's say you have somebody who knows statistics and knows how to program R and they use tidy models, but do we have to like learn all of tidy models or can we like literally start pulling things out if we understand what we're pulling out? And I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. I can pull anything out. Uh, what did we do before to do this uh, linear model? That is not a T-ball. Yeah. So if it's a T-ball, we can work uh, uh, around the, the T-ball. So it's a T-ball, you select a column, it's a T-ball. I think it can be, I think pulling out like manually can be dangerous for two reasons. One is that you don't know what you are pulling out. And the other is that I guess they, they think that it's like an internal thing that they can change it. So if they do some like refactoring, they do not guarantee that they they will keep the same structure of the objects. That's my understanding. So yeah, that's true. I, but like at the like under the hood, this LM model is going to be the regular LM function call in R. And there should okay. still be a way to just get that model object and then we just do regular LM stuff as if we never used tidy models again, right? Like, I feel like there should be a way to access that uh, without using tidy models. Um, yeah, I get that. Yeah, there and, must be. But I, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. And I and I mentioned this only because like sometimes you want to do some really weird custom exploration of your model, and if it's not already pre-prepped or like pre like pre-computed in tidy models you you have no way to to get it and then and that's sort of like that's sort of i i I'm, like, I'm trying to find like an example where max says like don't do this even though you can um but that's sort of like one of those like if you know statistics and you know what you're doing you should be able to access like the really low level stuff because for you, it might be easier for you to do versus um, relying completely on tidy models. Because I can see like with tidy models, they try to lower the barrier and make everything like easier to use. But it's one of those like when something is highly integrated, it becomes less flexible. And I guess like you, you won't be able to make like certain plots because you don't have access to certain bits anymore. And I'm trying to figure out like if, if that's the case. Or like, if if you can have access to it, is there is there is there things that you should not do <laughs> uh, just because you have access to it? And that 
might be more of a question for Max if I can find the actual example that I'm trying to um, refer to. Because I do, I distinctly remember there was like a, a part in the book where Max was like, don't do predict like this. Like you have to call it like this. Um, and I just need to find find that. Wasn't it related to maybe there, there you still need to apply the recipe or the pre-processing before? Something yeah, like I think so. It was like the model object that it got saved doesn't contain like it can it's it's missing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I found the chapter. Hold on, let me see if I can link it. <laughs> um all right, this part. Um in chat. Right here. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> that part. So there was like the, if you go to that page, there was like that, that robot with the crossed eyes that says like, never pass the fit ele element from parsnip. Um, use predict of that, but do not use predict of dollar fit. And so I guess, are there any other examples where it was like, yeah, if you know how to get the fit uh, fitted object, don't do don't use it i guess that's sort of the question for everyone else not just um not just for the people here right because right now we have uh if you scroll down a little bit um yeah right there where that call out box is with the robot x's um is there an example in stacks where we shouldn't like pull out values or like anywhere other than predict where we shouldn't be pulling out values because i can totally see that yeah that here here you have a model and you still have to use the pre-processing to apply it to a new data set so it seems similar in that in that why, why don't we plot the, 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 three, the three predictions and see how they differ? And then you have the prediction from the, the linear model. And then what, what do we need? The, the, the coefficient? Because you have uh, the predictions. You have the prediction in the, in the table. You have three, you have the, the displacement and uh, the three value of the prediction for the three models. I think those are the resampled uh, predictions and not, not the like the final fit. maybe we should ask just just ask max what what does he think or or is, is there any function to pull those out Mm -hmm. 
Bonjour ma petite Marissa. C'est un autre Parisien euh, qui a 7 ou 6 ans. Les ans où et de comment nous avons eu à parler. Maintenant, à début. Are you searching for a way to, to find a model? Or? I can't find anything, sorry. All right. Yeah, that would be nice though. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for the presentation. It, it was great. Thank you. So, yeah, Daniel mentioned inference that there's like, if you want to do it, you have to pull out stuff. And actually, the next chapter is about the tidy model approach for, for inference. Uh, so, so would anyone like to take it? Uh, but I I can try that, or we can try it again with Patrika if you are open to that. Okay, and uh, does next week work for you? Sure. I I have uh, two two things in the same the same day. I think uh, that would be fine. That's that's a good challenge. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. If you don't have Did more you... questions, yeah. Sorry. Oh no. no. Go ahead. Okay, does, does anyone have anything to add? Um, I, we have 10 minutes. Do, do you want me to share uh, you the, the things from the book? Uh, I think I have to... Okay. So this is the what is it? The the, the question I've, I've I've asked before, no? Because you have what is it? Okay, this is the thing inside. Uh, instead, you just put inside the the model, no? That that was very uh, interesting because I just reloaded everything. Um, I didn't check the the stack vignette. So when when uh, when you use this, uh, which is somehow somewhere, um, you, I'm not sure I understand your question, but I think the difference is whether you have a workflow set or multiple different workflows. So, so if you have a workflow set, then it's similar to this. And if you have multiple different workflows, but not a workflow set, then you follow what Joan so showed us. Okay, because uh, this is um, like you have things inside. You already examples. You have you did a uh, few things, you know. Yeah. Instead of just uh, oh, when you use text, you always have your models resampled and tuned and trained and everything. So, in my understanding, ah, uh, no, okay, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Give me a second because mm-hmm. I, I, I do mm-hmm. have a thing. Um, okay, this was this. No? Load it. Okay, so now uh, I don't have. Okay, so let's see if I can. How long it takes? Uh, ah, okay, this is what it's out from that. Okay. And then you blend the prediction with what uh, and then you feed the members. Okay, so this is the other one. Okay, these are the weights. And uh, in your example, you had uh, two ways. How do you use the, these weights then? And then? What was the question? Can you say that again? So you as well have found the, the, the weights, and you have found just two weights, which is you said the another one was just zero, so just drop it somehow, I don't know. Mm-hmm. How do you use these weights? You can use the predict function, can't you? So you have like a final model with the with the individual model components and, and with the weight. You have a final ensemble model. Yeah, like once you have the weights, you don't touch them. You just retrain the each candidates and then use the weights to assemble them together. That's my understanding. Well, I don't know. No, So the line 87, the predict, uh-huh. so 87. Yes, the 87. So there the predict function, I think, uses the weights inside them. So you don't have to use them because, because it's, it's built in. Like. So in, 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 in that line of predict, you will first predict with the, with the individual models and then use the weights to combine those. I don't know why it is an error. What Probably is something's it? not loaded. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh, forget, yeah. not loaded. Well, well, I don't load it now. That's fine. Uh, I stopped sharing. Okay. Thanks for the meeting. All right. Have a nice week, guys. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.